Hello everyone, Richard Lewis here with another video and we're going to be updating one of the running stories we've had going on in the channel. It all comes back to skins gambling of course, like so many things do. But you'll recall that we did a video uh, basically outlining that the Washington State Gambling Commission had given Valve until October the 14th to respond and explain how Steam, and specifically the role it plays in skin gambling, is in compliance with Washington State's gambling laws. And this was pretty serious, if you remember, because failure to provide a satisfactory explanation about how they were going, how they were either in compliance or how they were going to be in compliance could lead to civil or criminal action being taken against the company. So we did say this is a big deal. Uh, this could have very wide-reaching ramifications uh, for the for the company, uh, for the state of uh, you know skins and, and and everything else attached to it, and esports gambling. So we're watching the case with interest. Now, is what happened. It gets to October the fourteenth, and this is so classically Valve. We've all heard of Valve time. You know, we all know the jokes about, oh, you know, well, where's Half-Life 3? Not happening. Where's where's this game? Never coming, you know. And, and just historically, they've always done things at their own pace because they don't need to dance necessarily to anyone's tune. I thought it might have been a bit different this time with the Washington State Gambling Commission, but apparently not. Uh, they actually hadn't responded to them on the close of business October the 14th. Uh, and in fact, they notified the commission, yeah, we're still working on our uh, official reply. And um, we'll get it for you soon. And this was issued in an official press release by the Washington State Gambling Commission. I don't know if they've uh, had no experience of working with Valve before or don't know about some of their uh, deadlines when it comes to producing games. But here it is. Uh, you can see it says... Uh, at the close of business October 14th, 2016, a representative of Valve Corporation notified commission staff that the company is still working on a reply to the commission's letter and a reply will be provided Monday, October 17th, 2016. Director David Trujillo said, I am disappointed that Valve Corporation missed Friday's deadline, but encouraged that they have committed to responding today. I look forward to reviewing their response in detail. The commission previously told Valve Corporation to stop allowing the transfer of virtual weapons, known as skins, for gambling activities through the company's Steam platform. Valve Corporation had until October the 14th, 2016, to respond and explain how it is in full compliance with Washington's gambling laws or risk having the Gambling Commission take additional civil or criminal action against the company. The commissioner, Chris Stearns, who you'll also remember was referenced in our lengthy video on the topic with Bryce Blum, our, our go-to attorney. Uh, and it's that he said the type of approach Valve decides to take will be very important. The Washington State Gambling Commission was created to protect the public by ensuring gambling is legal and honest. So you got to hand it to Valve here. They have just stared them down, basically. It's just like, yeah, look, we're pretty confident we don't have a case to answer. Uh, and just to be absolutely certain, we're going to answer it in our own time. And that's exactly uh, what they've done here. So it go, it moves on. We end up on uh, Monday the 17th. And indeed, the statement uh, is, is issued. Now, this is a long one. And we're going to take our copy from TechRaptor again. Just a little plug for TechRaptor here. At a time when journalism is really in the fucking toilet, I think anyone can look at the election coverage and, and realize that it's not just games journalism. That's in the toilet. It's it's pretty much all journalism right now. There's a very few handful of people that deserve your attention, deserve your trust. TechRaptor are absolutely one of them. They do great work. Uh, and, and they're a very small company that haven't sold out. Uh, you know, they, 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 have, 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 you know, done, uh, pledge drives themselves to raise funds. Um, so they're a great uh, website that deserves your support. Anyway, now the letter, like I say, it's a lengthy one. So strap yourselves in and we will give you the gist. So in a response directly to David Trujillo, Valve Corporation, uh, said this letter responds to your letter dated September 27th, 2016. 
and follows up on our conversations with the commission over the last 18 months. Most recently, our conference called on October 3rd regarding online gambling on third-party sites with Counter-Strike Global Offensive skins. As we have explained on multiple occasions, Valve is not engaged in gambling or the promotion of gambling, and we do not facilitate gambling. The operation of Steam and CSGO is lawful under Washington law. We were surprised and disappointed that the commission chose to publicly accuse Valve of illegal activity and threaten our employees with criminal charges. There is no factual or legal support for these accusations. Notwithstanding, as you know, Valve has taken its own steps to discourage skins gambling on third-party websites. We are open to further cooperation with the commission. So just before we go on to the uh, next segment, which is a, a history of Valve and history of skins... This is very combative language. This is saying, uh, look, we've already we've already gone over this. We do not engage in gambling. We do not promote gambling. And we do not facilitate gambling. Now, look, the first two are inarguable. The third one has always been the sticking block. Do they facilitate it or don't they? And that's what uh, some of these uh, lawyers have tried to argue or are going to attempt to argue in upcoming class action suits. Uh, and, and, and certainly they're right in saying that the operation of Steam and CSGO is lawful under Washington law. Now, you know, I, I don't think Washington necessarily, the Washington State Gambling Commission were necessarily uh, as combative and, and perhaps that's a little bit of an interpretation, but they did say there could be criminal or civil charges here. And, and according to Valve Corporation's legal counsel, there's no factual or legal support for these accusations. So you can see they are saying, look, this is this is nonsense. We, we don't have a case to answer here. Uh, and that's going to be our stance, which certainly will make for an interesting legal battle moving forward. So then it goes on to talk a little bit about Valve. Uh, so, and we'll skip the first bit because I'm sure we all know that if you're watching my channel. It says, uh, through Steam, we sell games and provide services to PC game makers to help operate or add features for their games. Valve splits revenue with third-party game makers for games and items sold on Steam, but Valve provides the other services for free, including delivery of game updates, chat, friend lists, community message boards, user authentication, and exchange of in-game items. In addition to selling and supporting more than 10,000 third-party games, Valve also operates its own games, including CSGO. The skins referred to in your letter are in-game digital items within CSGO. Outside of Steam, and we believe outside of the United States, certain websites offer gambling propositions. This next line is incredibly crucial to some of the things that were being alleged. Valve has no business relationship with such gambling sites, and indeed, they can come into existence, operate, and go out of existence without Valve's knowledge. Now, that's important because you'll remember there were some people on, on, on social media that were alluding to Valve having business relationships with some of these sites. You'll also remember that some of these sites have said, oh, you know, well, we ran this past Valve and Valve were okay with it. Which, while it might be a stretch to call that a business relationship, it's certainly communication, it's certainly a relationship. Valve are now saying quite plainly here that they have no business relationship with such gambling sites. Anyone alleging that they do is wrong. So that's also very important, whether or not that'll be something that comes out uh, when they're doing a discovery or whatever they call it. I'm certainly not as au fait with the American legal system as I should be. Uh, I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Such websites may accept trades of CSGO skins, among other things, as wages from other users, and settle winnings with further trades of CSGO skins. The gambling propositions may be bets on the outcome of professional CSGO matches, or there may be other games of chance, such as lotteries. Valve does not promote or encourage Steam customers to use such gambling sites. Valve does not receive revenue from these sites. And again, I suppose this is another part that's going to be a stumbling block and debated in any legal action. Valve certainly doesn't uh, receive revenue from these sites, but the argument always has been that they're providing the chips and therefore adding value to the to the chips themselves, which they create, the chips being the skin. So it, it, the, I, the argument I've seen made, and it's not necessarily one I subscribe to, but it's certainly one I've seen made, is that it's in Valve's interest to allow these sites to exist because it adds value to the thing that they create, uh, which, which are the chips themselves, the skins themselves. Your letter demands that Valve stop facilitating the use of skins for gambling activities through its Steam platform. In-game items, such as virtual weapons, music packs, or decorative stickers, are common features in computer games. CSGO customers can purchase skins or receive them as random drops during gameplay. They are part of the game. 
There are two Steam services that skin gambling sites appear to use. First is the exchange of skins. Steam allows exchange of various virtual items on Steam by Steam users for the entertainment of Steam customers. They can take items that they have purchased or acquired via gameplay and trade them with Steam users for other items that they may enjoy more or sell them for Steam wallet funds to spend on other Steam purchases. Valve enables the exchange of skins on Steam in one of two ways. Through the Steam Marketplace, where Steam customers offer Steam wallet funds to purchase a skin from other customers, or through Steam Trading, where a Steam customer makes an offer of trade for in-game items directly to another Steam customer. This is all important because, obviously, we know a large amount of this it was happening off-site it wasn't happening through steam's marketplace where valve would get a cut it was happening off-site where people were literally you know paypaling each other the money or you know doing dubious trades for free in exchange for other things and other items and bitcoin and all this other stuff which of course is totally outside of valve's remit and they don't have any control there valve valve makes receives i guess that should be makes and or receives but valve receives a small transaction fee in steam wallet funds for marketplace transactions but valve does not receive any compensation for trading importantly valve does not allow steam customers to cash out skins or steam wallet fund for real world money valve does not charge any fees for user to user trades of skins and that's also true um Second is authentication of Steam users. Steam offers authentication using an open internet standard known as OpenID. OpenID allows a Steam customer to identify himself on a third-party website by association with his Steam account without having to give his Steam credentials to the third-party site. OpenID services are ubiquitous on the internet, as many other internet services such as Google and Facebook offer OpenID for their customers as well. None of these activities are illegal in Washington or any other jurisdiction, and we do not believe the commission contends to the contrary so what valve has done and can do the commission's letter publicly threatens valve with criminal prosecution for gambling on third party sites we do not understand the legal or factual reasoning supporting the position from the commission's letter or from our conversations with the commission we are also unsure of how you propose we do this if there is a specific criminal statute or regulation you believe valve is violating please provide a citation we are not aware of any such law that Steam or our games are violating. So again, it comes back to this idea, Valve's position very strongly is we're not breaking any law uh, and that the commission is grandstanding when they publicly say, you know, we're going to prosecute you, you could face criminal charges, uh, and they are demanding a citation under what law uh, it supposedly is. And what's also interesting, this letter here from Valve suggests that the commission's conversations were a lot more friendly, a lot more warm. And then when it came to issuing that letter in public, again, that grandstanding element came into it and they went with a lot stronger, a lot harsher language than had been discussed in private. The commission's main argument seemed to be Valve could stop this, so it should. We do not want to turn off the Steam services described above that skin gambling sites have taken advantage of. In-game items, Steam trading and open idea of substantial benefits for Steam customers and Steam game making partners. We do not believe it is the, the Commission's intention, nor is it within the Commission's authority, to turn off lawful, commercial, and communication services that are not directed to gambling in Washington. Steam does, however, provide warnings to customers about using Steam trading and open ID. Furthermore, Valve has taken action itself against skin gambling. As the commission knows, in July 2016, Valve announced its intent to disable the Steam accounts of Skins gambling sites for breach of Steam users' agreements. And then it links to the news page where it was. We followed this announcement with cease and desist letters of our own to over 40 Skins gambling sites that we are able to identify when we shut down the Steam accounts of these sites. So that also confirms what a lot of people were saying at the time, that these sites had had their bots turned off. A lot of people were trying to find workarounds around it at the time. Some people were openly denying it. But according to Valve, that's what happened. However, we do not know all the skin gambling sites that may exist or may be newly created, and we're not always able to identify the bot accounts that particular skins gambling sites may use to try and effectuate Steam trades. Cleverly designed bots can be indistinguishable from real users performing legitimate trades, and their methods and techniques are constantly evolving. A bot account that is blocked can easily be recreated with a new identity almost immediately. So again, Valve there acknowledging that there's going to be a problem moving forward because how can you shut down a bot account if it looks like a legitimate account? If all the trades is engaging and pertaining to gambling, how would they possibly know? 
Valve can enforce its user agreements against the Steam accounts of Skins gambling sites, where we can identify the site and identify the corresponding account. In fact, we would be happy to cooperate with the Commission if it is able to identify more Skins gambling sites that are illegal in Washington and the Steam accounts through which they operate. We welcome the chance for further communication with the Commission if it would like to clarify the legal allegations against Valve or alternatively to work with Valve to identify offending Steam accounts of gambling sites. Sincerely, Liam Lavery, Legal Counsel, Valve Corporation. So that last fucking paragraph there is a bit of a fucking bombshell because while it sounds nice and friendly, basically what Valve is saying here is uh, we'd be happy to cooperate with the Commission on the following grounds. The first is can you, identif- uh, c- can you identify uh what laws we've broken because we don't believe we've broken any and if you yourselves can point to these gambling sites and the steam accounts they use we will take action against them but in other words they're saying we've done our bit now the ball is in your fucking court so this is uh you know quite a story quite a response from valve it's certainly a lot uh firmer than I was expecting. Valve absolutely not caving, not capitulating. Valve saying in no uncertain terms, we do not believe we are breaking any laws. We do not believe you've even provided us with the correct citation. And we have done everything we can to reasonably stop these gambling sites. If you, the Washington State Gambling Commission, after all, it's your remit. You're the one with the problem with it. You're the, you're the entity that's des- uh, designed and designated to stop this. If you can get in touch with us and tell us where these sites are, we'll act further. But until then, we believe we're in full compliance with the law. Now, this letter being made public, thanks to Tech Tech Raptor, this is going to be a big one. This is going to be interesting because now I feel if the Washington State Gambling Commission were prone to grandstanding, and I'm not saying they were, but that's certainly the impression you would get from reading Valve's take on the letter, then they're going to have to continue that posturing they're going to have to say something back and go well this isn't satisfactory because ultimately the other thing the letter says is valve haven't done anything beyond what they've already done valve refused to acknowledge any wrongdoing they they have pointed to everything they've already done and they say we can't really do anything moving forward so that, that letter is just reiterating as far as we're concerned we're done with it so what that leads to the washington state gambling commission's reaction Nobody knows how that's going to go. So that's the update. That's where we stand. Valve basically flexing their muscles and certainly looking to have the better of it on paper, at least. We now have to await what the Washington State Gambling Commission's response. When that will come, if one will come, we don't know. But obviously, if it does, uh, you'll hear about it in this channel. So thanks a lot for watching this video, and we will see you next time.